Tell us what you think of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In particular, for each, was it justified? Was it legal? Was it competently handled? For Afghanistan, it looks like we've got an evil Taliban and a Karzai who's becoming more dictatorial. Yeah. Um, what would you do from here and why? Yeah. Really good question about world affairs and foreign affairs, our military and our involvement in conflicts around the world. Firstly, if we look at Iraq, because in terms of the chronology, that one came first. I think it's always well worth looking back and reading the late, great Robin Cook's speech the day before the debates, the day before myself and 139, 138 of my colleagues uh, voted against um, the war in Iraq. There wasn't enough of us. It was carried with the support of, of Tory MPs uh, and the um, many members of the Labour government, obviously, as well. I thought it was the wrong thing to do for a whole range of reasons. First, firstly, I was never convinced, that, as, as Robin wasn't, if you read his speech, that what was being talked about in terms of weapons of mass destruction were an imminent threat to us. There's no doubt that Saddam had had weapons of mass destruction in the past. He'd used them against his own people. A chemical Alley, good example of that. You know, he'd done some abhorrent things to his own people. But there was no evidence, I feel, that there was an imminent threat to the United Kingdom. But that aside... This was a war being waged in support of a very right-wing US regime in the White House, who I felt had no real interest, despite the roadmap which was being produced at the time about the Middle East and justice for the Palestinians, uh, in, in, in a state alongside Israel, two states living in peace and harmony, I didn't actually believe that the Bush administration would carry that through. I thought it was warm words to try to get the world to agree on military action in Iraq. And thirdly, perhaps most importantly, if you're going to do these things, you have to do it through some kind of worldwide consensus. We didn't get a second UN resolution. And I've been very frank with people here in Gloucester you don't get a second UN resolution, I can't back this because we haven't got the world behind us. We didn't get a second UN resolution. So at that point, the British government, I think, should have said, well, sorry, you're on your own, Mr Bush, because there is not worldwide support for this. And very many of us felt that Hans Blix and the weapons inspectors deserved more time uh, in Iraq. And we could have, you know, well, history's been written now and it went ahead and it happened and uh, and um, I totally respect those that took a different view from me. Personally I felt it was the wrong thing to do and a history will end up judging whether I was right or whether they were right and uh, I'm not the sort of person to be going around saying na 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 na, uh, I was right, you were wrong, or you were right and I was wrong but um, I do think it was not the right conflict and I do think that um, in terms of post-war planning, it could have been handled far, far better as well. I mean, we had Abu Ghraib uh, and uh, the torture of prisoners that happened over there, countless numbers of people who have been killed. I do genuinely hope that Iraq ends up in a better place and as a strong uh, Iraqi, not Western-style, but Iraqi-style democracy, I would never stick up for Saddam Hussein. He was a terrible dictator who murdered and slaughtered so many of his own people. So I do hope that Iraq ends up in a better place, but my own views on where we were, where we ended up, are very much on record. Now, Afghanistan was a whole different kettle of fish. We went into Afghanistan after aeroplanes full of diesel, full of passengers had flown into the Twin Towers in the United States, murdering thousands upon thousands of innocent men, women, probably children as well, of all faiths, of all races, of all backgrounds. Now, that plot, and many of the terrorist plots that we've seen here in our country and across the whole of the world, not just the Western world, 
uh, had been hatched in Afghanistan and those training camps there and, and on the border of Pakistan. We had a choice to allow that to continue or to assemble a worldwide coalition to remove the Taliban regime in Afghanistan and remove al-Qaeda from those training camps. That's what we did. I think that was the right thing to do. Well, you can't just allow events like 9-11 and 7-7 for that matter in our own country to just happen and ignore it and say, well, that's OK, uh, as long as we're you know, nice to people and give out aid. Uh, aid is important, but sometimes you actually have to take action as well to, to weed out people who um, were not practising Islam, but people who were um, practising a perversion of it and tried to, you know, present an image of a faith which is just so untrue and unrelated to Islam that it's harming not just people of other faiths around the world, it's, it's harmed the Muslim faith, one of the world's great faiths. Now, the question is, where do we go from here? We went to Afghanistan, we got rid of the Taliban. I speak to a lot of people who are in the military and ex-members of the military are very proud that two of my candidates standing in local elections on May the 6th are ex-military men themselves. And what troops tend to tell me is they want us now to get behind them in Afghanistan. They want us to support them in Afghanistan. Because I look at some of the projects they've been involved in, restoring water to villages that never had them. Under the Taliban, girls were not allowed to go to school. They were not allowed to listen to music. Allowing young people, boys and girls, to go to schools, building schools, building infrastructure, building new communities, building democracy, and building opportunities for people to be able to take their livestock to market. I share those concerns about Karzai and Karzai's regime. We don't live in a perfect world, far from it. And I think we need to be very, very firm on the Afghan government in terms of corruption and tackling it. But I do think we also need to support our troops in Afghanistan because they are doing a lot of good there, not just in terms of tackling the risk of worldwide terrorism, but they are doing a lot of good for ordinary Afghan people who have got the opportunity to get an education, got a chance to have electricity, running water, the kind of things that we expect to have ourselves in this country, why shouldn't they have those rights as well?